Hey everybody, this is a very impromptu check-in. Um, I definitely have been feeling it heavy on my spirit all day to just hold space for all of the feelings and emotions and the roller coaster that um, those of us in the diaspora have gone through in the last couple of days with combat restarting in Tigray with bombs being dropped on civilians with these damn genocide supporters trying to validate um, bombing a kindergarten you know and now bombing a hospital like that's more than obvious that those are not targets those should never be targets of war and constantly being gaslighted by the people who are supposed to care and the people that are constantly screaming um you know humanitarian rights etc cetera, etc cetera, with their fake outrage and their fake concern is just so degrading and heartbreaking and just feels like so much despair um and so I want to hold space. I want to hold space for us because clearly uh, people like to silence us and they like to ignore us and they like to turn a blind eye to our pain. But we do have each other and we're able to hold space for one another. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do today. I want to talk to y'all. Those of you who are still up, who can't sleep, um who are stressed out, who are filled with anxiety, with depression, with guilt. Um, what was the word that, that Brene Brown was explaining the other day? There's so many other words to describe our feelings. Anguish. Um, so much. Just so many things. So if you could do me a favor, if you are in your group chats and you know that some of your friends are up suffering um struggling and they need a space to be heard um and to talk about what we're feeling and what we're going through i would love if you could share this i will stay on for a little while and i just kind of want to you know just hold space and talk to folks because what we're going through is just really unimaginable and like, I'm already ready to start crying. So um, I think that we as a community could use a good cry right about now. Um, and I know that the world doesn't often let us be soft. But I will go down dying and trying to, to let people know that it is perfectly normal to be in tears right now. It is perfectly normal for your emotions to be all over the place right now you are allowed to be sad you are allowed to cry you are allowed to be angry and to be frustrated and to be devastated you are whatever you feel in this moment considering what we're going through is completely valid and normal and I don't want people thinking that they're going crazy you're not going crazy this world is crazy and these people are trying, okay? When I say these people, I'm talking about specifically these genocide um, supporters, right? And perpetrators. Like, Abby knows what he's doing. His council knows what they're doing. They can't touch you physically, right? They can't touch us in the in the diaspora physically. So they mess with our mental health. That's what they do. Like, quite literally, that's what they do. They try to break our spirit because they can't reach us. And they want to break the spirit of the Tigrayan people. They don't want us to keep fighting. They don't want us to actually have freedom. And these Western countries are a joke, okay? Like, the international community loves to talk about freedom and um, your ability to live your life, blah, 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 blah. It's lip service. It's lip service. They call us rebels because we're fighting for our survival. 
So when you actually utilize the freedom you're supposed to have, when you actually exercise your your voice, then you're a rebel. Like, it's absolutely beyond me. It's ridiculous. And we don't got to buy into that. We know better. We know what they're really saying. And I am really tired of people constantly gaslighting us. Like, it's devastating. It's beyond devastating. And I'm seeing so many people on my timeline suffering. Suffering in silence and feeling like they're going crazy and that they're screaming and not being heard. Listen, we got to hear each other. If nobody else is going to hear us, we got to hear each other. So that's what I'm here to do. That's what what um, I hope you guys are doing for each other in these group chats that you have in these communities that you're a part of like it's it's so difficult and we need each other it is our basic human instinct to connect with one another to want to be understood to want to be seen and felt to want to have empathy and we deserve that we deserve that and more we deserve all of that and we got to give it to ourselves first because clearly we see that there's not too many people trying to lend a hand or trying to help and part of me is like I get it the world has been in devastation a lot of people are at minimal capacity but the those people aside there's plenty of people who could do something and won't because it, it benefits this, them too much not to and that hurts the worst is like just having someone constantly putting that knife not even in your back it's in your front doing it to your face like literally it's so wild to see these ridiculous NGOs the so called um, UNs like union of what y'all united in oppressing black people y'all united in making sure that Africa stays poor Y'all united in um, making sure that, you know, you stay on top. I, you, what you were united for? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm trying to figure that out. And it's just been so devastating. So I just wanted to share space with y'all. Um, so again, if, if you're up and you are not sleeping because you were thinking about the attacks that have been happening in the last couple of days... Um, there's a couple of things to like remember, right? That anytime Abby's regime takes a loss on the battlefield, they take it out on the people. And it's very intentionally done. It is strategically done to try to break the spirit of the people. Trust and believe that that is the ultimate goal. And we have to continue to remember that our people, the people in Tigray, they're not just laying around waiting. They are continuously fighting for their survive, their survival, their ultimate survival. And they're not backing down and they're not giving up because what are your options, right? And that takes a level of resilience a level of oof. man that just hit me in the chest I actually have Sanat Sanati like tatted behind my ear and I remember when I got it I got it at 18 and I remembered like expressing and telling my uncle this is not just about strength See, I have tissues on deck all the time. So, if y'all needed a good cry, this would be a good time. Um, it wasn't just about physical strength. It was about having the mental, emotional, spiritual fortitude to continue pushing when everything in your body and your spirit is telling you to stop. When that little voice in the back of your head is like what does it matter and you're just like why keep trying just give up 
because sometimes it's easier to just give in. And um, every time I think of that, every time I consider doing that, I look up and I look around me and I see that the people are still going despite everything that has been thrown their way that most of us wouldn't have lasted three months in their shoes okay let alone three weeks that our people back home are literally fighting for their life every day and they have not given up and it's that resilience that is in my blood and it's so inspiring and it also is like ooh, oh man how do you give up on a people like that you know it's nothing but love that drives us it's nothing but love it's it's the love of our people it's the love that they're showing one another that they're willing to go out there and say, I have your back. I'm going to fight beside you. I'm going to lift you up. We're going to do this together. We're going to march together. We're going to fight back together. And it's that fighting spirit that continues to push me through. And it's that fighting spirit that continues to push us through in the diaspora. And it's one that we need to get better at holding together. And the the thing that we need to focus on here, out here, I mean, in the diaspora, is mentally continuing to, to hold each other down. Or actually, better yet, hold each other up. Hold each other up. Be your brother's keeper. Be your sister's keeper. <laughs> because that's what they're doing back home. They have no other choice. There is no other choice. You are not getting out of something like this on your own. You're not. You can't fight back on your own. You just can't do it. And I really want that to resonate with our community. Like, we don't survive without community. We don't survive without one another. We fight for one another. We got to. It's the only thing we can do. It's the only thing we can do. When you see your friends tweeting or posting anything um, that you could just tell their mental state is, is taking a hit, check up on them. You don't have to have all the answers. Sometimes it's just listen, you know? Sometimes it's really just about listening about knowing that you're not alone, right? Knowing that you're not crazy and that what you're going through is real. Because in our despair and in our grief, sometimes we lose a sense of reality. We lose a sense of purpose. We stop remembering why we get up and we let depression kick us down. And um, again, that's very intentionally and strategically done to our people over and over and over again look at our parents look at your grandparents god knows all it is is their mental fortitude to keep going to somehow think that ooh, that my grandma my god just like you got to breathe through those thoughts <laughs> that this is the third war she's seen in her lifetime third and she's still here and she's still surviving <laughs> I remember telling this woman I was like she was like man there's a video I have of her and maybe I'll post it. Um, she was like, look at your grandma. 
I'm old, Adi Gay, like, you know, I'm getting old. Um, she has a full set of white hair. Full, she is a silver fox, okay? I can't wait to be one. Actually, hold on, let me knock on wood. I, I could wait a couple years, okay? But she is a full, full silver fox, and it's so beautiful, and it's so contrasted against her beautiful dark skin. And um, this woman has more life in her than... Man, <laughs> thank God. She has so much life in her to be as strong as she is, to live through three wars, to not only raise her children, but her grandchildren. And she was like, uh, oh, you know. I'm translating, but, you know, God, please give me more life so that I can see your grandchildren. I just want to hug and hold them. And after that, I don't care if I'm gone. And I just keep praying that, like, she sticks around long enough so that I can hold my end of that bargain. <laughs> that I could promise her that. And I'm just like, I'm Dwight. I don't know how you're sitting there still pushing through this. And then I just start smiling like I am now because she's so beautiful and she's so strong. And if she can do this three times, then I definitely can do it once. And I can make sure that I don't have to do it again. And that she doesn't have to keep seeing her generations suffer the way that we're suffering. And that woman hasn't been to a hospital a day in her life. A day in her life. I'm telling you. Every time I would go back home to take it out, I would get sick. Every single time. And this little old woman would come walking to wherever I was to come check on me. And she, you know, she would be like, is that go out <laughs> You know? How do you get like I'm telling you I'm looking like I'll be like man I'm a wimp <laughs> like I'm over here got a fever like I'll be crying over everything and you know here comes this sweet little strong old lady and she won't even wait for a car she just walk I'm telling you bro they got they got stamina stamina will come walk wherever I am climb whatever stairs she needs to climb to come see her her granddaughter and to make sure I was good. I would go to all the hospitals in my other, all of them. <sighs> my God. It's so crazy to think of. It is so crazy for me to think of. And, um, I, you know what, I'll just, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to share some truth, and maybe some of you feel this way too. Hi, hi. oh, sorry, I didn't even see all y'all coming in, what's up, y'all? Um, Again, please share with your friends, if you guys are, are up late, you are stressed, and, and you need somebody to cry with, I'm here, okay? We cry together, you can cry on your end of the screen. Um, And if you want to come on and talk to me, we could do this together too. I'm I'm here for that. But I just, man, I'm going to do a little story time, um, if that's okay with y'all. So, I got woken up at 4 a.m. today um, because my beautiful aunt uh, started her labor. <laughs> I was already on baby alert, so I already knew my job. We already discussed, you know, who she wanted there, um, t you know, for the delivery. So me and her husband got her butts up and took her to the hospital and, you know, spent my whole morning with her. And uh, she got to deliver a very healthy, beautiful baby boy. And um, I couldn't have been prouder. And everyone, I was talking to my mom and my aunts and they were like, you stayed in the room? I said, hell yeah, I stayed in the room. I was going to leave her by herself. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, we both stayed in. And they were like, you helped her? I was like, 
yeah and they're over here shocked like i wouldn't do that i was like why not you you guys had kids <laughs> what are you talking about and um it was honestly such um an honor and a privilege and a blessing to to watch this new life be created and i just i just saw that baby boy come out and i was like oh my god he's here he's here and we were just so overwhelmed and excited and just happy to see this like beautiful innocent human being this little baby who is completely reliant on us for his survival and um it was shadowed by the grief that we felt for all the mothers who don't get to experience their blessing in the same way and it was so devastating to come out of that and to hear that one of the very few hospitals left in McCullough was under attack and um, I just thought of like those beautiful mothers who already had to go through an unbearable pregnancy that had no medication and mind you my aunt was not playing, okay? She was like, where's the pain meds? Where's the pain Like, she was, you know, like, a, I don't know. I'm, I haven't been a woman in labor, but as I see it in all the movies, she was exactly that. Um, She was like, nope, I need the pills. I need whatever. Give me something. Like, she was like, yep, give me the epidural. She was not playing. And um, she was like, oh, my God, I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. I mean, I can laugh now because it's done and, you know, we're all good. But in the moment, I was trying not to laugh at her. But I was also just like, you, I know this feels crazy. So me and her husband were trying to um, encourage her. And we were like, this is so natural. This is a part of life. Every woman goes through this. Yes, it's painful, but it'll be over soon. And we started talking about um, if the... If the women in our country can do this without medicine, you know, um, you can do it. <laughs> like, you can do it. You will get through this. And she was just like, I don't know how they're doing this. She's sitting there in pain and she was like, I can't imagine how the women in, in Tigray are literally having children with no medical aid at all just purely natural right um and on the side of the road and I I I sat there I watched the whole labor I supported in the whole labor and I was just I we just sat there in so much gratitude so much gratitude because I just I was witnessing the strength and the resilience that it took my aunt to push through all the pain that she was feeling to bring this baby boy out. And I just could not stop. My heart could not stop thinking about the women who didn't have that and who are continuously not having that. And then to live under siege and to live with all the bullshit that they're living with and to be attacked for what? For what? For what reason? It's just devastating and then to come on the internet and every single day there are people whose only job is to try to make your misery worse and to try to gaslight you and to make you feel like you know do you deserve this in some weird twisted ass way because they're hurt and they're broken and they're filled with so much hate that they want the rest of us to be miserable with them. And I just, I was so angry. Like, just angry for the people. Because I know I'm not physically suffering. And mentally, I have the skills that I need to cope and to take care of me. And I take the breaks I need. 
but it was making me so angry because I know that there's so many who are so vulnerable in our community that feel like they don't have the support that my aunt was surrounded by and I knew she would be perfectly fine because she has all of us here that we love and support her um that this baby is going to be raised in a community of love that there was people waiting on him there was food nece- like ready my aunt couldn't produce there's food for him there wasn't going to be anything that this baby needs or wants and when it's just such a blessing and I'm so grateful for that and so that anger started to turn into what can I do for my people and that's how I've survived everything because I remember how blessed I am and remind myself I do my grounding and I remember like you're good you have everything you need you are capable of providing whatever it is that you don't have Um, and you can ask for help and more times than not you will receive it and it's in that vein and in that spirit that I was like okay I'm exhausted it's been a long day Um, and I do need to do my stretching and to take care of my body before I lay down the rest but it was so heavy on my spirit that my people know that they're not alone in this and that what I could do is to turn around and use that blessing to share with others some type of message of support and resilience and for anyone who is in that you know very desperate um, and broken and dark place where they're starting to consider what's the point The point is you're still here. The point is we're still here. This genocide was never going to be won. Make this very clear, okay? Oh. This genocide was never going to be won. Let me repeat that for the people in the back. I said this before and I'm going to say this until I'm blue in the face. If the point of genocide is to exterminate the Tigrayan people, then Abby has already lost. And he knows it. When people say these sick and disgusting things of, oh, um, we want to make sure there's no more no more uh, babies coming out of Tigrayan wombs. Guess what? One just did today. So he already lost. He already lost because Tigray isn't dead because we're here. The diaspora exists. We exist all over the world. If we ever need to be reminded when people try to gaslight us, when these people, like, when, when crazy trolls and people who literally get paid, okay? People who get paid to make us miserable and try to convince us that our plight is unwinnable, that it's impossible. They already lost. We already won because we're still here. And and in their mind, we shouldn't have been. But we're here and p- babies are still being born in the diaspora every day. Every day. And it is a beautiful miracle that renews hope and faith. And it, it doesn't, doesn't take away from the despair, but it does kept, keep soothing it and reminding me that if for nothing else I can keep pushing forward for the lives that we do still have and that every single one of them matter every single one of you myself included we all matter despite how much people try to convince us otherwise they wouldn't try so hard if we didn't if we didn't matter They wouldn't try so hard to try to exterminate us. I promise you that much. Oh, man. But this also gives me a lot of gratitude for um, the health care that I did receive whenever I was back home. And I am, you know, honestly ashamed, too, of 
of my perception of it. I'm sure other people have <laughs> similar experiences of coming from whatever country city you come from and going to take a ride for the the first time and um I remember being very young and ignorant and talking to my dad I don't know must have had like food poisoning or something and I was like dad we need to go to the hospital we need to do this this and this and I don't know what I thought I was gonna walk into but it was not what I thought it was gonna be um and just immediately like being so condescending and rude to the hospital staff and people of like, do y'all even know what you're doing? What are these machines? Y'all don't have the latest stuff. Like just, just completely being ignorant to the plight of, of the people there and how um, difficult it was to run a hospital and to get resources into the, into our region. And this was pre-war. And I just, kept feeling that especially in the last couple years of just that guilt of being a spoiled diaspora and remembering some of the looks and faces and arguments I would get into with the staff when they would ask me something and I was like no that doesn't even make sense why would I do that (laughs) you know I'm like arguing with doctors like I know better um and I was just like wow like I can't believe I was that person And I felt completely guilty about that, seeing how these doctors and and staff and nurses and volunteers are doing everything they can with nothing. They have literally with like no resources. Like I've lost so many family members because they don't have any medicine. They have very little supplies in the first place. But somehow, some way, being creative and resourceful, they are still trying to treat people. And to attack those very people is just so sickening. And I felt sick to my stomach because I was that person. And um, I will never be that person again on my, oof, on my mama's life. I will never, ever be that person again. And um, I will definitely be spending the rest of my time on this earth making sure that I support those very people who have given everything that they have to support ours. And um, that that level of resilience, that level of grit, ooh, the level of fight, of respect and honor that our people have in the dignity they show one another, it is uh, truly inspiring. And um, I've never been prouder to be from Tigray and to continue to be a voice for people who are just so brilliantly amazing and beautiful in every way and resilient in all the ways that matter. So, um, Again, if you're you're feeling the despair of the last few days, and um, not just the last few days, man, the last two years, just know I'm here. I see you. I feel you. My heart is suffering just as yours is. You're not crazy. You're not crazy at all. Um, Depression and anxiety are real. Our anguish is real. Our people deserve more than this. We deserve more than this. And if for nothing else, hold on to the love and the fighting spirit that our people have. Because if they can keep going, if they can keep marching, then so can we. We can wake up another day and fight for them. We can get to the next meal, get to the next breath even, if we continue to hold on to why we're here in the first place. If you can remember your purpose in all of this and that 
is literally not over until it's over. And as long as um, our people are willing to fight, are willing to um, to show up every day and to keep pushing, let us be motivated by that. Let us be inspired by that. And remember that as they cry, we cry too. And it's okay to to feel that, to feel that pain. That just means you're human. That just means your heart is working. Really and truly. If you can feel the devastation that you're feeling right now, that means your heart is working. It means that you have not lost your humanity. It means that you have the ability to to empathize with others. And you're suffering because you want to do something about it. And you want to try to take that pain away. And that just means you're an amazing human being. That's what that means. Even through your tears, even through your ugliness <laughs> that you're feeling on the inside and, and all of the hard emotions. It means that you have a beautifully just empathetic, sympathetic spirit. And that you're willing to do something about it. And that when Tigrat opens, you'll be able to do even more abundantly, exceedingly over what little we feel like we can do here. But you continuously thinking about these people, thinking of ways to heal them, to be their light. It's amazing. And don't forget it. So, um... I probably <laughs> been on here longer than I planned. Um, and I know it's it's late night for us in the US, but hopefully people who need this message in the morning will get it. Um and if you need a place to feel and to be seen, that you know that it's here. If you need a voice, send me messages. It's fine. I'll listen and I'll respond as much as I can, you know? Um, I'll plug you in where I can. But what I don't want to continue to see is people suffering in silence. Don't do that to yourself. You don't need to. Just as Tigray is holding Tigray together, um, those of us in the diaspora can follow that lead. And I will continue to be the light that I am. Um, and to share that light whenever I feel like is needed. Some that's starting to feel like it's every day. Um, <laughs> but as as long as I can do it, I wanna do it. And so with that I just wanna say that I love us. Um and I just wanna see us make it through this and I wanna see people find their reason to smile and find their joy and help them create it. And to to understand that you're still beautiful in your dreams and your imagination and your purpose is is still alive just as you were still alive and just as you were still breathing you're here for a reason and it might feel like you don't know what that is right now and that's okay but you will eventually figure those things out and in the meantime just remember that you matter that you were loved, that you were important, that you were a kind and amazing and beautiful human being. And that's it. And whenever you need that reminder, play this back. That's all I gotta say. So good night to everybody. Um, I hope you get the rest that you deserve. Even if it's just laying down and you can't actually sleep, that's okay. That is okay. Just try and, and move your body, stretch your body out. If you can rest for even short periods at a time, do that. Because all of that is going to help you. And your body needs you. Your mind needs you. Your spirit needs you. Your family needs you. And I need you. I need you. Ooh. Wow, yeah. I really need you guys. I need you guys to not give up. Please do not. Please reach out before you do that. 
even if you don't know me, that's okay. Please reach out. If you don't have anyone else to reach out to, please reach out. Because I I just, it hurts. And I can't keep breaking my heart <laughs> losing people. So, I love you all so much. Have a beautiful day. And um, do me a favor and share this with a friend that you know needs to hear it. Alright, bye y'all.